Okay, we've been using um, selection statements to control the flows of our programs by splitting that flow down one path or another, or one of three paths, um, et cetera, with if statements and switches. And now we want to see how can we control the flow so that we keep it stuck in a particular section of code um, and allow that to repeat multiple times. And to do that, we use loops. Um, there's actually two types of loops, conditional and iterative. We're going to look at conditional loops first because they are most like if statements. Um, one of these is called a while loop, and here's what it looks like. So I have here an integer called num. I'm letting the user type in the number, and I'm grabbing it from them. Um, if this were an if statement, I would immediately begin with the word if. Since this is a while loop, I'm beginning with the word while. And inside a set of parentheses, I put a condition or a Boolean expression. These are the same kind of conditions that I would write with an if statement. So let's say I want this loop to run and repeat while num is less than 10. Okay. Now, anything that I put inside these curly brackets will run, and it will keep running over and over and over, so long as num remains less than 10. So let's just have it print out um, the number was. This isn't very useful, but just for demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to have them enter a new number um, so we can keep this loop going or get it to exit. And then after this, I'm going to just put a message that says escaped loop so we can tell when we're at this point in the code. So what's going to happen is the user is going to type in a number. Let's say they typed in an 8. It'll hit the while loop. It'll evaluate the condition immediately. A while loop is called an entrance control loop because it checks the condition at the beginning to see whether it's true, to see whether it should run at all. Okay. So let's say they typed 8. That'll get you inside the loop. It'll print out 8. It'll let them type another number. If they type any number less than 10, this loop will repeat again. So at the point where they've done the last statement in here, it goes back up and it evaluates, is this still true? If it is, it runs the code inside again. If it's false, let's say they did type the number 11, it will jump to here and start executing the code that's underneath the loop. So let's see what this looks like in the console. Okay, so let's enter a number. Let's enter the number 5. So I'm inside my loop. The condition remains true, so I get to go again. You'll see I can type whatever numbers I want. When I finally type a number bigger than 10 or equal to 10, I escape the loop. So this thing will repeat as many times as I type in a number that is less than 10. When you have a loop like this, the variable that is part of the condition that controls the loop, and if it's more than one, then you have more than one of these, is called a loop control variable, or LCV. This is because the value of this thing is determining whether the loop should run or not. Because a while loop is an entrance controlled loop, it's possible that the stuff inside never runs. So for example, if I were to type a 10 as my initial input here, my condition would immediately be false, and so the loop would not run. Okay. It's possible um, instead of checking a range as my condition, I can look for an exact value. So I can say, while it's not equal to 10, keep the loop going. So in this case now, when I type numbers that are not 10, the thing will keep going. Numbers over 10 will keep going. Only the exact value 10 will stop the loop. When I have set up a condition like this that's looking and watching for one particular value, then this variable here is now called a sentinel. It's like the name, a sentinel is like a soldier that's looking for a particular thing. It's guarding against it. So if it's looking for one particular value, we call this variable a sentinel. Okay. Um, you might have something, instead of just printing the number out, let's have it get added to a variable over and over again. So I'm going to make an additional variable called sum and start it at zero. I'm going to take in here um, and add whatever number they're typing to sum. And then we'll see at the end uh, what the sum is. Okay, get rid of this message here. Okay. So now every number they type, so long as it's not 10, is going to get added to sum. So 10 is kind of my exit number. All right, so let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 should stop. So my sum is 10, which is 4 plus 3, which is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So my numbers added together, except for the exit number, is 10. When I have a variable inside here that is growing over time, and I'm adding something to it each time, um, and that amount is variable that I'm adding, I'm going to call this guy an accumulator. Okay. 
Now, another thing I might want to do in my loop is to figure out how many times it iterates, which means how, much, how many times does the code inside run? Okay, so let's call this count instead. And then what I'll do is every time I successfully get into the loop brackets or body again, I'm going to make count go up. So at the end, I know that the number of iterations is what's inside that variable because this guy is going up by one each time. So if I run this now, one, two, four, five, ten, I got inside the loop four times. So there were four iterations. When I have a variable like this that is figuring out the number of iterations, we call this a counter. So counters versus accumulators, counters go up by one each time accumulators can grow by different amounts each time. That's a small distinction. Okay. So while loop is our first conditional loop. The other kind of conditional loop is a do while loop. And it looks very similar. In fact, we can keep this almost exactly the same. It just, instead of having the condition at the beginning, it has it at the end. Okay. So it starts with the word do. You have your body marked with curlies, whatever code inside, and then the condition gets checked at the end, and note there's this strange semicolon. That's the only place um, in all our coding where we have a semicolon on the same line as a condition, um, but we have to put that there for our do while loop. So the big difference between this guy and the while loop is that this doesn't check the condition until the end. This guy is called an exit controlled loop. Um, what does that mean? Well, even if this number here is 10 when they first enter it, that doesn't get checked until the loop in, the code inside the loop runs once. And that means that the minimum number of times that this loop runs is one. Okay. So if I run this, it should look pretty similar to what I got um, last time. One, two, three, four, ten. So I got inside the code five times. Um, so you'll see there's not much difference in what you see. Um, but this guy checks it at the end. The nice thing about a do while loop, you'll notice here I've got this question. I've got it written twice. I have it here inside the loop. I also have it up here. If I use a do while loop, since I'm guaranteed to get inside once, I can delete that code from there and have the question only appear one time. So this guy is good if you have like a menu or something that you're offering and you want it um, to only have to ask the question once, then you can use this instead of a while loop. Okay. Um, before I stop talking, I want to warn you about one possible situation. Um, so it is possible to write a loop that never ends. So let me get rid of this extra stuff. And I'm actually going to just let this um, let's see. Let's just um, equals five. So if I had a variable and I started at five and I made my condition while num is less than 10. Let's just have it print out what that num is, and then let's make num go down. Um, you'll notice what I've set up here is it's going to be 5. The next time it's going to be 4. The next time 3, 2, 1, 0. It's getting smaller and smaller, which means that this is never going to become false, um, which means that I have an infinite loop. Let me show you what that looks like. So it's going to look like a crazy scrolling of my screen. Um, basically the gist is that I have no way to escape the loop and so my loop runs infinitely. We call this an infinite loop. Um, if this happens to you and cl clicking this X doesn't work, um, there's a button up here that's the stop button. That will definitely stop it. So if you try to close this, and I'm not sure if it'll close for me or not right now, if you try and it doesn't work, then you can use that button. If it does work, that's great. So you have to be careful as you're writing a loop that this condition will eventually become false, or you are trapped inside there forever, and any code that's after the loop um, can't be reached.